Welcome back, mobile home investors. If you're watching this video, then you have some interest in wholesaling a mobile home when there is an underlying lien, when there's a lien on the mobile home. Uh, it's personal property, it's in a park, it's on somebody's land, and it is personal property. At least you think it's personal property, it's just the home itself. So there should be a title. In most states, there's a mobile home title. Uh, and that shows the ownership and not in every state but regardless if your state requires a title or doesn't require a title uh, this video will still be pertinent for you uh, this video is going to discuss uh, talk about the high level overview every one of these bullet points we can talk about in further detail and they could be their own video with questions and things to watch out for so let's jump into these steps there's five steps that we're going to talk about um, pretty detailed steps, but first look how wonderfully clean this whiteboard is. I don't think we'll ever see it this clean again. So enjoy it. You can read everything very easily, I hope. Uh, but first, just a quick video interruption here. Do yourself a favor. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you press that little bell icon too. Since you're obviously interested in predictably making money with mobile homes, consider signing up for the free version of the Mobile Home Formula's free mini mobile home investing mini course. It's mini on the lessons, but big in mobile home investor training to get you started investing in mobile homes safely. After this video, go to mobilehomeinvesting.net to learn more. Now let's continue talking about when you're wholesaling a mobile home with a lien attached to the title. Even before you have anything under contract, you first have to advertise and market, which you should be doing as an investor. People need to know who you are and that you exist before they can reach out to you or you can reach out to them and sellers call or you call sellers, you screen the seller and then you set an appointment or you don't set an appointment. But if you set an appointment, you dealt deemed it's worth your time. You go to the appointment, you inspect the home, uh, you perform your due diligence. You haven't even made an offer just yet. We want to understand what is going on. Who is the seller? What are they selling? Why are they selling? So let's ask some questions. Let's learn all about the repairs needed for this home and the park, the, that the park that it's in, the rules, the application process, and more for the park, the taxes for the mobile home, the resale for the mobile home, the ARV, the price, the time of the year, the price the seller's asking, the titles or one title, uh, other liens that the title has or that the seller has, uh, the demand for the property, the supply of other properties, and then is this real property? Maybe it's personal property, maybe it's real property. It's actually attached and married to the land and that's a whole different process. It's not a deal breaker, but it's important to know. Once all this due diligence looks good, you're going to know that there's an underlying loan on the mobile home because that's one of the questions you should be asking the, the seller and you will find out that the seller does not have the title in hand. That means that they don't have the title because the bank is holding it. Even in states where the uh, there are no titles necessarily, the bank is holding a lien on the property and that the uh, owner won't have the title. They won't have anything because the bank has that. Like when you buy a, a, a car and you get a bank loan, the bank is holding that car title. So uh, I want you to add yourself as an authorized user on the account. You're not stepping in and uh, becoming responsible for that debt, but I want you to call up the bank with the seller and has a three-way phone call, or you can send an authorization to release mortgage information to the bank to add you onto the account. That way, you can call up the bank yourself to say, hello, my name's Joe Johnson, and I'm, you know, I'm, this, is, this is the account number, and they'll say, oh yeah, Joe Johnson, we see that you're an authorized user, what would you like to know? And you wanna know, what's the payoff of this mobile home? The seller tells you it's 35 grand, is it 35 grand? And what about, you know, at the end of the month, is it gonna be something different? What about a timeline when things are paid off? At certain banks, when you pay off the, the, the 35,000, uh, that'll be an instant uh, release of the lien with what's an electronic a lien release. Things are just, it's like a flip of a switch and things are done electronically. So the timeline after the money is wired to the bank and that the, the lien is paid off, the timeline of when that satisfaction is going to come to the seller, when the seller is going to have proof that they paid off everything, it's going to be instantaneous. Or like many banks still do, they're not electronically released, they send something in the mail. So the bank is holding the title, they receive the payoff, somebody pays off the 35000 
and then the bank puts it a letter in the mail that's a satisfaction letter, or it's even the title and the satisfaction letter, or it's a title that's changed into the seller's name, but that's going to come in the mail. Like so, the timeline is it is it snail mail where it's going to take literally a month when the when the bank gets paid off. This payoff happens. Well, 30 days later, something is going to arrive in the mail that that shows proof of this. And that's what we want to know. You know, we don't want to make up anything. If it's instantly released, great. If it takes 30 days, great. We just want to know that. What's the process when things go to be paid off? Now, once you know all this, now you can actually make one or two or three offers uh, to try to purchase the mobile home. Uh, or to try to get it under contract to wholesale it, if that was your plan all along. You can negotiate, of course, which you should, and then get the home under contract. That's step number two. Our goal is to genuinely help all the parties involved in a real estate transaction, but we cannot move in slow motion. We quickly want to get the mobile home under contract between the seller and that's a little plus and you so you should be signing this and the seller should be signing this you should be getting this home under contract tie it up lock it up whether it's a wholesale kind of contract a consignment contract an option type of an agreement or something else it's going to allow you to market advertise and resell the property so that you are not paying for the mobile home. The, the, the buyer's money that you get is going to be paying off the underlying bank loan and giving the seller any kind of money. Let's go ahead and give an example on this just so we can actually sort of have an example. Let's say that the payoff is uh, $35,000 roughly. And let's say that the seller is selling a, I don't know, a 3-2 uh, mobile home and they want a total of let's say 40,000, just really rough numbers. We'll keep that down here. It doesn't matter about the repairs at the moment, but it's a three, two, they want $40,000. So they want $5,000 in equity over the, the, the payoff amount. Okay, let's, let's keep going. You've probably already seen this. You wanna get the home under contract, Great. Uh, if you're going to do any repairs, we usually don't when we wholesale it. If you were going to clean it up or do some repairs, you could do that now. But we usually don't do that. And if we do make repairs, we want to use another form to make sure we recoup that money when the home sells. But you're going to advertise it and market it. You're going to show the home. Show it one at a time. Show it with an open house, a combination of the both, something different. Uh, and then negotiate. Don't take the first offer typically. We can start high and work our way down. Um, what we want to negotiate and when you do find a buyer or multiple buyers uh, we want to go ahead and have them put down a deposit which should be a pretty hefty deposit a couple thousand dollars or more for sure remember these are serious buyers that are ready to close they're ready to close and pay the the full you know whatever the price is 40 50 80 thousand dollars i mean they're ready to pay that like quickly they typically don't have to go through a bank. When we're wholesaling a property, most of the time the end buyer is going to have cash. So this isn't somebody that has to wait around. You know, the deposit should not be $50 when you find somebody. The deposit should be four, seven, ten thousand $10,000 to hold this property. And that brings us to the third step. Here it is, step number three. We want to get the home under contract between the seller and the buyer. We want the buyer on the hook that they're buying the home. Uh, they should start the park approval process if the mobile home is in a park. Uh, they should have a proof of funds that they can show you. They can pull out their phone. They can show a bank account with the money in there. They shouldn't be dodging your question or afraid. We're looking for you know humble, sincere people that can show proof that they actually have the ability to close. This might be another investor or professional type of buyer. This might be more of an average Joe, but they should still have the money and be able to show the funds like immediately. With the deposit, this is typically going to be your fee. And the deposit, they get this back, this, this potential buyer gets the deposit back if they don't get approved at the park. That's the only way they get the deposit back. If the park says, no, you have too bad of credit, and you're not going to be able to live here, then we want to give them their money back and we start the process again to market the home and show it and, or go with this like a second buyer or a third buyer if you have other people lined up. Um, and that's good. Make sure that this buyer, they do have the ability to close because they have a proof of funds. They're approved at the park. 
and they put down your deposit and then really after a couple days this is going to be the longest thing is the park approval process which might just take a couple hours it might take a couple days if it's in a park uh, if it's not in a park and it has to be moved then you don't even need this approval process and you can close the next day or the day after if the mobile home has to be moved from its current location make sure that the buyer has lined up a mover that you verified in a location where this home is going to a lot of people talk we want to make sure somebody has their ducks lined up so that they can actually remove the home but if the mobile home is in a park uh, that doesn't have to happen and you can close pretty quickly when you close uh, the title, the ownership will not be changing hands that day. Uh, it's going to take some time. And that goes back to the payoff that we talked about before. Let's quickly talk about this hypothetical deal that the payoff is $35,000 going to the bank. The seller wants a total of forty dollars So that means $5,000 in equity to the seller. And you've marketed the home and you've advertised it for, let's say, sixty, dollars And somebody's talked you down to fifty. dollars So... The buyer is going to be paying 50 k for the home. The bank is going to get 35 The seller is going to receive $5,000, leaving a whopping $10,000 balance for you uh, once this is all said and done. So uh, those are the quick numbers. Okay, now let's move on. Now let's talk about closing when the actual, what does that look like? So first things first, the buyer. What is the buyer going to sign? And remember, all of this, we could talk about the paperwork and the how-to and notarizing things and what's important and when to do things and what these different things look like and how they have to be signed. But let's go over this quickly. When you close on a mobile home uh, and there's an underlying bank loan on the property, here's what's going to happen. Uh, and this does vary a tiny bit from state to state, but this is the bulk of what's going to happen. The buyer is going to sign a bill of sale that they are going to be buying this home. The buyer is also going to get the keys and the possession that day. They're going to walk out of closing with the keys and the possession, and they can go into their, their, their mobile home. It's their home. They can go into it. They've signed a bill of sale. They can walk away with that. Uh, and they paid off the underlying banknote. They paid off this $30,000. We'll go kind of like that. They've paid that off, so that is kind of wiped away, and that's thirty-five thousand. The balance uh, that the the rest of this money, the the fifteen thousand, because they're paying a total of fifty, so they're giving fifty thousand today at closing. They're paying uh, thirty-five thousand to the bank. The other fifteen thousand dollars that goes to you to hold or to the attorney to hold, and you have an attorney. You have maybe one of a few other people here with an office with an office and we'll get back to the attorney in just a second at closing the seller is going to uh, the seller gets their debt paid off they're going to sign a bill of sale they're going to sign powers of attorney multiple powers of attorney in some states you can only use a power of attorney once and it, sometimes it has to be a specific state power of attorney but you can only use it once every signature so you you need like multiple power of attorneys. In some states, one power of attorney, you can use it multiple signatures. So, you know, make, make sure you get multiple power of attorneys just in case. And other state paperwork to close. In some states, you will need an additional form signed by the seller or the buyer or both. And so make sure you get this signed at closing. If a notary is needed on the bill of sale, then that should obviously be done. If a notary is needed on this other form, that should obviously be done. Notice that there's no title being signed right here. So technically, the title is still in the seller's name as of all, you know, right now. You, you are going to uh, maybe take your fee here. If you don't take it as a deposit here, you're going to go ahead and take it here at closing. And you're going to make sure that when this is paid off to the bank, that the satisfaction letter or the new titles, the new paperwork, all correspondence, comes to your business address or the attorney's office. And remember, that could take that could be instantaneous, or it could take a couple days, it could take a couple weeks, or more than likely a month. You know, this is paid off, let's say the tenth of whatever month, and then it's it's paid off with a wire, so it's like instantly paid off at the bank. But the bank is going to take two weeks before they mail something out, maybe maybe longer, and it's going to take another two weeks in the mail. So expect that. 
you know, no title, no satisfaction is going to come in for maybe up to 30 days. And that's normal. You know, the, the, the buyers moved in the home afterwards. The seller's kind of gone on with their life. Maybe they've moved away. The seller doesn't get any money right now. The attorney or you hold that equity. And if you can see where this is going on step number five, this could be three or four weeks down the road uh, if a satisfaction letter that says, congratulations, you paid off the mobile home. That's a satisfaction letter and it's gonna come from the bank. It's proof that the state needs to print off a new title with no liens in the lien holder section. Most titles have a lien holder section and it's gonna say none. That means the home's free and clear. There's no bank loan. That person has no debt on that title. So a satisfaction letter will probably arrive in the mail that will allow a uh, title to be made with the seller's name on it that's free and clear. Now there's a free and clear title that can be transferred to the buyer's name. The seller has to sign it. So you call the seller. You know where the seller is and say, Hey, good news, the satisfaction letter came in. You call the buyer, hey, good news, the satisfaction letter came in. So the seller is going to sign uh, the free and clear title. The buyer is going to sign the free and clear title. The seller wants to sign this because remember, they're gonna get their five grand. If they don't have ec any equity coming to them, you can use the power of attorneys that you have to sign on the seller or sign for the seller if they like disappeared already. Because uh, remember, this is a few weeks later. So you can use the power of attorneys here. The buyer signs the title. The title goes into the new buyer's name. The seller gets their equity. The seller and buyer give you a rave review. Remember, you did a great job here, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Buyer. I love to be able to help more people and more families like you. Could you please give me a review here or here? Um, and then you keep investing. During all of this entire process, you should have not been like stopping what you were doing just for this one deal. You should have your head down. You should be continuing to advertise and market. Let people find you. You find people and you should continually, weekly, many days of the week, be making offers, going to find new sellers, talking to new sellers, making more offers, following up and negotiating. So I hope that this all made sense. There's a lot of questions that you might have. Feel free to comment them below or email me directly at support at mobile homeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Again, my name is John. I hope that this has been helpful. If it has, like and subscribe, share this uh, with uh, other folks. I hope it helps. I hope it saves you money and confusion and allows you to do more deals. Um, invest safely. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.